but I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Lauren Smith with Columbia Sportswear Company. Um, I've recently joined the company about a year ago now, which is hard to believe. And I am on our corporate responsibility uh, team focused in on our product sustainability. I see Lauren, you've joined. From Green Hi. Bay. We are, of course, having a couple technical difficulties. But while we are working those out, I thought I would jump in to get the conversation started, which you've already done. I, of course, am not prepared to with all the questions that Joel <laughs> has thoughtfully crafted, but I would love it if you just started with a little bit of sort of your take on this project, where you're thinking about this, how you're thinking about this, what is going on with circular product design. Sure, no problem. Um, well, at, at Columbia, really for us, um, we look at circularity through the lens of durability. So durability and performance are really intertwined in all the products that we make, you know, outerwear, sportswear, footwear, technical products. Um, and by designing durable products for us, we're not only keeping people out there and more active for a longer time, we're also keeping our products outside and in use for longer too. So as we continue to evolve our circularity strategy and look at our products, um, then we'll continue to explore other avenues in circularity, such as recyclability or disassembly and design. Oh, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> hi, everyone. Again, uh, Joel McCower. Uh, we're still working out all the kinks on this, but uh, I think we're 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 uh, getting in the zone here. Uh, first of all, this is being recorded, and you'll be able to share this later. Um, and uh, you're already uh, uh, saying hello in the chat box about who you are, where you're from. So keep doing that, Lauren. Just first of all, um, uh, yeah. Not everybody knows Columbia Sportswear, so maybe talk a little bit about. Uh, you know, what you do. Right. Um, so we're talking a little bit about the Columbia's take on uh, on circularity. So we look at it through the lens of durability. But for those of you that may not be uh, familiar with Columbia Sportswear, we are a family of brands. We have four brands, Mountain Hardware, Prana, Sorel, and Columbia. Um, so we make a variety of sportswear, active wear, um, technical wear, and, and equipment um to span all of your needs for various activities um and we are u.s based um but do sell products all over the globe so i have heard from a few uh, there are a lot of columbia lovers out there which is great to see yeah so how did circularity become uh, a goal an issue uh, at columbia and and where does it sit in the company who owns it and and how did you uh uh, let's, let's just start with that, and then we'll get into how you actually design things around that. Yeah, great. Um, well, I'd say it, it sits primarily right now, um, our corporate responsibility team, we're driving it, but really it's incorporated throughout all the different departments from um, you know design and sourcing um, to our materials teams to really how we design and look at it on um, the user end and on the back end of the product's life as well. Um, so we take a holistic approach to looking at um, circularity, particularly with durability as the lens through which we focus, um, because without without durable products, we just can't afford anything less than a durable product. Um, so that is what we design to and what we're known for and why our products all get passed on through the generations. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can. can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, good. Okay. You can't see yeah. me apparently, but... No. Um, and so, so you're talking about both clothing and equipment are the two main things. So how does it differ between those two? Um, how, how does circularity differ? Yeah, how to, in terms of how you think about it and durability, all that, yes. Um, well, the way we look at it is, um, you know, dur durability for us, it, it has to go in any product that we make. You know, you need to be well protected, whether you're out on, you know, the side of the mountain or uh, at the beach or just you know running around town so whether that's your your jackets or your tent um, right, durability okay, oh, we have all right great oh hi hi Sri. we're in we're, we're in midstream here so uh we'll get to you in a minute if you can you for a sec that'd be great and i, I i'm having camera tr trouble so so it goes I keep going lauren i'm sorry all right um, I'm just saying we, we design it um, throughout all of our products, regardless of the, the type of product. So I'll turn it over to you there. Well, um, 
so is it is the design for longevity for repairability for reusability is it, what are the criteria that you think of there when you're looking at uh, you know and when you're starting with a new product or a, or a product refresh what's the language you use so really we're looking at um, longevity of our products uh, we have a, a design ethos to which there are three different elements and you know while designing for durability is at our top you know we have our durability criteria from the different standards that we test to um, we also want to keep in mind our different design principles so one element of that is our our sustainable product decisions so when we're looking at a new product or a you know current product um, that may be refreshed for example we want to make sure that we have the opportunity to include preferred attributes or new sustainable attributes in our products like recycled content or organic content. Um, another element of that is our inclusion in the outdoors. You know, we connect active people with their passions. So we really want to make sure that, for example, the colors and the patterns that we're using appeal to everyone. We have inclusive sizing. We also have timeless designs that will carry our pieces through trends and through the years um, to make sure that people are, are really hanging on to those products and not um, not moving on to new products, unless, you know, of course, people's needs change. And so we're always innovating and have those options for change as well. And then the third element that we have in our design ethos is rooted in nature. So everything that we make belongs in the outdoors. So we like to consider how is it going to be used in hiking? You know, what are our inspirations for print and color designs? We use a lot of inspiration in um, from biomimicry. So for example, like the colors on a butterfly wing, how might we uh, incorporate that into the design of a jacket pattern? Yeah. Okay, well, let's move over to yeah. Cisco and, and Sri, uh, is it Naranyanan? Say it better than I did, obviously. Uh, but um, uh, Sri is a senior product manager in the Internet of Things at Cisco. Uh, first of all, let's just foundationally talk a little bit about what circular economy means at Cisco. And for people who don't know Cisco, give the 30 second elevator pitch. Sure. Um, glad to be on finally after all the technical issues that I've went through this morning. Sorry about that. Well. So uh, the easiest way to describe circular economy is by contrasting it to a traditional linear economy, right? In a linear economy, a company designs a product, builds it, ships it out to the customer, and when customers are done using the product, they dispose it. Maybe it gets recycled, maybe it gets reused, but traditionally that, that's part of the life, life cycle hasn't been uh, given much thought to in the design or sales process because we had plenty of relatively inexpensive resources available to fulfill the demand. Yeah, that's well, clearly, the yeah, clearly that uh, not thinking about the linear, uh, not thinking about the circularity is changing. So how is yeah. it changing at Cisco? What's the new circular design strategy? Yeah, so instead of looking products as something to be consumed and disposed, we are uh, seeing them as valuable assets uh, that can be used again and again, uh, starting from designing pollution from the beginning to the use of the products and materials we have already had in the field to regenerating uh, natural systems. And for that, we have uh, we, we base it on five different filler, pillars or five different focus area at Cisco. And first one being, uh, you know, uh, circular design. That's uh, that goes into the designing of the products for use, reuse, and repair, and re reusing, recycle, uh, using recycled materials. Second is on the circular operations that focuses on on driving our own uh, internal operations and extended operations with our suppliers and manufacturers, and also is is uh, circular consumption and uh, making sure that we, we uh, ensure product take backs, particularly after customer end of use, and also driving repair and reuse and prioritizing reuse of assets, basically. A fourth pillar is uh, circular sure. solutions. Uh, what we're doing with our technologies, collaboration, IoT, artificial intelligence to enable circular economy. And the fifth uh, one is uh, ecosystem leadership. Uh, because this cannot happen in a silo uh, mode, this has to. This is an area of collaborative work uh, that enables us to drive solutions for challenges that cannot be uh, addressed alone. Well, let's get specific. Let's talk, give an example of a product. Uh, I know you have one that's uh, that's been down through this process and how it's changed or how you designed it in the first place. 
Um, absolutely. So um, we uh, in in Cisco we have several products that uh, we uh, we have implemented circular design in different ways. There's been project for no paint. There's been project for recycled plastics uh, using reusable pallet uh, uh, wraps. Uh, there's also an example of uh, fiber-based packaging. Uh, the one most important thing is product modularity and standardization. That's what I'm really passionate about um, because I, uh, uh, I, I that that's a really hard thing thing to achieve. Rest of the things can be built into the operations and it can be standardized, um, but a product modularity and standardization needs to be built in the core of the design of the product. Uh, so, um, so there's a product that I wanted to uh, talk about, which is the my. Uh, industrial router that I directly manage. Uh, it's a completely modular and uh, and uh, flexible router, uh, and it, it we, we, the one of the biggest challenges that we've had is with, with the industrial router. Is it, it gets deployed in different industries, and one of the main challenges is uh, keeping up with technology as technologies evolve. Uh, they have to change, rip and replace the product every three years or even um, three to five years. That's the refresh, refresh cycle. And industry customers don't like it. So, um, so circularity was not, the, the modularization was not just a, a nice to have thing, but the need of the hour. Um, we had to go that way. Uh, so we uh, went ahead uh, and made everything modular and all of the components, the LTE, anything that changes or advances in a shorter span of time, we made it modular such that it is very easy and and uh, for customers to keep up uh, if when the technology uh, evolves and then the customer needs to uh, move from one technology to the other let's say from 3g to 4g or 5g is around the corner uh, they don't have to throw the entire appliance they get to keep almost 80 percent of the asset that they invested in already and they only need to switch the module so uh, as the module, as we, as technology was, we'll bring out new modules yeah. and they simply need to add or- So, so you're up to, you know, upgrade the, the customers, which makes that makes sense. Um, is there a financial benefit to them for doing that? And for that matter, is there a financial benefit for Cisco? Um, uh, actually, there's definitely a lot of financial benefit. Uh, it has to, circularity is not just, uh, uh, a good sustainable um, uh, green logo that we'd like to have. There's definitely a lot of benefit, but uh, traditionally it's not viewed in that uh, angle. It's seen as something, oh, there's a lot of up upfront cost that goes into the making of the product. Obviously the CapEx will be more, the cogs of the unit is going to be uh, the product that I was talking about. Uh, it went up by 20%. So if we just focused, had a narrow, a narrowed or tunnel vision of just the cogs or one element of it, uh, we wouldn't have gone there, right? We, we wouldn't have uh, uh, gotten here. Uh, but if you let, just look at the overall uh, investment over 10 years, five years even, the case is really very clear. Uh, the return of investment, not just for Cisco, for our customers, um, there's definitely a upfront cost, cap capital expense, because uh, you need more resources to build modularity, uh, human resources, and also uh, additional PCBs that you need to um, uh, take into account for adding more modules, right? So COGS goes up, CAPEX goes up, that's only a short-term cost. Um, but the long-term benefit over five or 10 years is just phenomenal. We had uh, just looking at the opera, uh, opportunity cost, right? What we would have been able to do if we if we had this product versus, you know, two years or one and a half or two years that it takes to make a new product. Just looking at it, it it's a case on its own. So uh, it was not very obvious, but obviously I had to pull in all these elements to the business justification. And um, yeah, I think uh, it's uh, universally accepted now. Uh-oh, Joel, we can't hear you. Yeah. I guess while we're figuring out the the, the speakers there, I, I can jump in um, and focus on a product of ours. I know, Shri, you were talking about a, a lot about modularity and the opportunities that Cisco has, you know, with modularity and different equipment. Um, that is a component that we have an opportunity to 
look more into as we continue to evolve our circularity strategy and develop our products accordingly. Um, but for us, as we were talking about before, you know, longevity is really what we're focused on. And I think a great example of that is a, a jacket that we have. We're, we have our OutDry Eco Extreme jacket. And this is a really innovative, cool approach to your traditional rain jacket, waterproof, breathable membrane that you know, usually has used the durable water repellents that have PFCs in it. Um, but for us, it started out, you know, engaged leadership, right? I think, you know, they're really what three, three items that really are the, the how to's of getting a sustainable product through one, you engage your leadership two, really focusing in on a new product or a redesigned product. And then three, really iterating, you know, there are always new innovations. Um, but so in the case of our, our outdry eco extreme, our ODX, jacket. Oh, Joel, do you have something there? Okay. Um, I was just going to say that. Yeah, that, um, yeah. Okay. yeah we can hear this. There we well, go. I have a question. I have a question, Lauren, that's related to what you're talking about. And I'd love to hear from both of you on this, which is the trade off between sustainability and durability, reusability or frank circularity. In other words, some of the materials that have a longer lifespan may be less, uh, uh, I hate to use this term, but environmentally friendly. Um, <laughs> And uh, and so, how do you think about that? Because there are definitely some some synthetics, for example, that may have a much longer life uh, life lifespan, but aren't necessarily may or may not be what you would use from a circular pr perspective. Yeah, I think I'll jump in there and just, um, expanding upon the this jacket example that I've brought up. I think that's a great opportunity, you know, for your innovation and design teams to come in. You know, we're always looking for new materials that not only have higher performance, but also um, will reduce our impact on the environment. So for example, this jacket, the ODX Eco Jacket that I mentioned, we not only wanted to take PFCs out of the jacket so that they are you know, taken out of the environment, but also it gives us the opportunity to incorporate new materials and new sustainable attributes in our jacket. So um, this jacket, it was an iterative process. The first version took the, the PFCs out of the membrane. Um, then the, the second version took PFCs out of the jacket as a whole. And so we were to use that and carry it forward in all of our styles within the ODX family. Um, and then also we were able to include things like uh, cotton and also reduce the um, the impact of the garment from a, a water perspective. The first item was, or the first iteration was developed without dyes. So we were able to cut out about 80% of the water usage from that uh, dyeing process. So there's a lot of opportunity um, to really start to, to evolve your products for better circularity um, and better materials for the environment as well. Yeah. Sri, do you Shree, ever have to trade off? End. Absolutely, yeah, uh, we did. Uh, so uh, the longer the uh, lifespan, uh, the more uh, you know you get to preserve the asset for the utilization goes up. But there, there is trade off, like like you said. Uh, in our case, it was more more layers of, of um, a PCB that we needed, needed to use, which we didn't have to. Um, have it in a product um you know if we if everything was embedded we didn't have to have that right um so in terms of materials we uh, we always make sure we comply with rojas and and all those uh, uh standards um but we did uh have to go into a mode where yeah we we are embedding a lot more uh layers into the into the unit uh, which we we didn't have to do that um but and that also posed a challenge where, um, you know, the, we needed to take into consideration more thermal cooling elements because the more you you stuff into a smaller compact uh, space, the more uh, effective the cooling needs to be. Otherwise, it it heats up and the power consumption uh, goes up. So then uh, we we had to mitigate this challenge uh, uh, through innovation on the thermal side, on the electrical side, uh, to make sure. Uh, conductive innovation came about. Um, for for instance, uh, on the electrical side, uh, um, we had to compensate for this additional elements, and we ended up okay. We had to keep the power really low, and how do we do that? How do we e efficiently cool cool the system? 
and uh, and we were able to achieve that by as an instance we went ahead we, we were able to do it through a single phase conversion uh, for the power input as opposed to uh, dual phase conversion which would result in more loss uh, power loss along the way and that actually uh, resulted in 45 percent uh, energy savings uh, so the power uh, savings was 45 percent or it's more 45 percent more efficient so that was a positive side effect um, so the more you invest uh, there's always challenges um, but innovation with innovation comes more more opportunities as well and there could be more better positive side effects yeah. like great. the one that Lauren I does there's a great good question here about uh, the recyclability of combining materials and when when a product has reached the end of its life and i guess isn't repairable or reusable anymore it does does that how does that factor into your uh, physical criteria the design criteria yeah that that's something that we're gonna we're starting to explore more you know a lot of the materials that we use are synthetic based for a lot of our sports and active wear um and you know the more complicated the blends the harder than uh, or the more challenging is to then separate those and regain those materials for other use um so moving forward we're exploring different materials you know perhaps some opportunity may lie in um you know just using one type of material, um, not as, um, you know, not blends that maybe have so many different types of, um, of materials in them. Uh, another thing that we look at too at Columbia is um, we have our take back program called ReThreads. And so that is the opportunity for our customers to bring back um, products, you know, clothing, shoes, we'll take back other brands as well. But we then take those and share them with our, send them to our um, third party sorter and recycling solutions provider, ICO. And so they take, you know, wearable items and they find new homes on the secondhand market. But then all of the other items that aren't wearable are then recycled into things like carpet padding or stuffing, insulation, those sorts of solutions. So they're not um, ending up in the land. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a frustratingly short amount of time we all have together here and we're almost out of it. But uh, Sri, uh, what's a, a lesson learned really briefly uh, that you uh, had and uh, that you now that you know, that you'd love to, others to know before they before they go down this path around designing for circularity? Yeah, um, it might look circularity sometimes might look uh, confusing or even daunting. Um, but the more you um, invest in, in, in the long-term vision and, uh, and look into the benefits over a long period of time, the case would be made and it would be really clear. And it's not uh, complicated. Uh, the only thing is it needs an out-of-the-box out of thinking. Um, and the simpler, simpler way to do it is going one step at a time and thinking, okay, what are the different areas that could be tackled which, where, where we have gaps? And what what is the need of the hour? What's the what is important for for our business and also uh, for customers, not just for the short term goals. Uh, what are our long term goals and what makes it more uh, uh, more uh, sense, both financially and also technologically? So uh, and what we are doing is we are building this um, this circular design principles into the core, the DNA design DNA uh, of our our corporate uh, uh, system. And we are getting it trickly. We are getting it to different business units yeah. and into different products yeah, that right. we are. Uh, Lauren, them. lesson learned that you want to make sure everybody gets uh, before they go down this path. Um, I would say that you know, along Shree's point, it it is a big topic to cover. But looking at it, you know, at a smaller scale, perhaps you take one one product and focus on one product or a collection of products then that you can take other pieces so for example the the trim pieces right from a jacket we have been able to take all recycled trims and make them inline trims to then use across product lines across seasons so focusing in on something small to start and then seeing how you might be able to scale it um, i would say is a nice way to to tackle the the issue or the opportunities of circularity in the beginning yeah, great. Well, we are out of time, not out of topics or questions by a long shot. So uh, we're, this is the first of a two part. So we're going to go right in about three or four minutes into the next one. I'm going to see if my technology will work better. Sorry mm -hmm. about the video thing. But uh, thank you. This is really interesting. And there's so much to learn, so many examples that we barely got to scratch the surface. But uh, 
Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Sri. And uh, we'll be looking forward to more from Columbia and Cisco. Thanks, everyone. And uh, we'll be back in a few more minutes with more on this topic. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All. You Thanks have a lot. great Bye. day. Bye-bye.